Hello and welcome to Let's Go Eat, the Herald Leaders podcast about eating and drinking in the bluegrass. I'm Janet Patton and I cover food and bourbon and craft beer. I'm Cheryl Truman. I cover business and features. We are doing a really special split edition of the podcast because we have so much news to be talking about today. But we are without our third musketeer today. Sally Shearer is back at the office. And she's really, really sad about that too because um, we are here at the Lexington Pastas Pasta Garage Italian Cafe, which is opening this week. And I think you're going to want to come see this. It's on Delaware Avenue. We're talking with owner uh, Leslie Romero about how this works and what you can get here. And I have to tell you, it smells really. It, really we good. could only get the smell to you right now. I mean, it's, we need it's smell, very smell-o-vision technology. Ri- yeah, rich and fresh and tomatoey and garlicky and squid inky. Yes, this this is something they're going to have. It's squid ink pasta. Can you believe that? Look at that. It's it's it's. Did you smell it? No. What? Oh, it's it's fishy. fishy. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that amazing? Ah, that's the thing about it. Yeah. So you use that with with fish product, or you just eat it on the He said he would he would you would get it with like scallops or a uh-huh. sea bass or something in a sauce. I think it's kind of cool. Looking. That is lovely. They're gonna have this when they open up this week. Um, and I also have an interview with Chandler Lyles, who is uh, who has opened Lyles Barbecue in Nicholasville. So we're gonna have a lot to talk about. There's just so many new places. I have a story in Wednesday's paper about Courtyard Deli. Do you remember mm-hmm. Courtyard Deli? Lawyer Haven. Lawyer Haven was downtown by the old courthouse, closed in January, and they have reopened on Church Street in the back of what it was a former church building uh, in Heritage Antiques. It's, and, uh, it's really pretty. Mm-hmm. It's the same menu, although they've, they've reconfigured it a little bit. So if you're used to going in and ordering like a Dagwood, you may have to actually spell out what you want. But don't freak out, she says. Chrissy says that you can still say, I want a Dagwood, and she'll know what you're talking about. And yes, it was already stuffed full of lawyers. <laughs> but there are a lot of other things coming too, right, Cheryl? Yes. Well, for example, uh, Crank and Boom. They are having a uh, VIP night on Friday to introduce their new location on um, Manchester Street in the distillery district there. $30 will get you an ice cream, a drink, and three gifts. Uh, if you go, be sure to ask them about something that uh, we had at Taste of the Bluegrass, or rather I had at Taste of the Bluegrass, I which I too. think was, well, was great, um, which is their vanilla bourbon ice cream with root beer, a float. Uh, mm-hmm. In this hot weather, it was absolutely delicious. Yeah, that really, I think Crank and Boom is good no matter what, but that was it, a it winner. Is, but that was particularly, yes, I mean, it just, you know, it was just a wonderful thing to have on top of it. And I've got um, another new place I just found out this week. I don't know if you've noticed that Huge Ass Burgers is gone. Is gone on Limestone. But what's coming in its place, I think it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be two restaurants, actually. The back half is going to be something called Freaking Unbelievable Burgers. And the front half will be something called Street Craves. <laughs> and it will have fresh local salads and uh, tacos, but, but really good really good tacos artisan made tacos and the burgers are really supposed to be sort of artisan too with they have something like 45 different toppings that you can pick from but they say really will encourage you to to for take, burgers yeah they say they, they will encourage you to take one of their pre-selected styles like a thai burger uh-huh. for instance because the people just get overly ambitious try to put things that don't go together onto one burger yeah, I would think with 45 ingredients, that would be a possibility. You could go wrong. But, you know, I mean, at least you will still have a, a burger place there um, around the corner from Smash Burger, I believe, uh, if you just need a burger. And you can still go over to Tolly Ho and get a burger as well. I'm here with Chandler Lyles of Lyles Barbecue. How long have you guys been open in your new store? Now, uh, Saturday night was our opening night. We How'd had, it go? It was amazing. I mean, blown away. It was about 180 people that we ended wow. up serving in three hours. There was a line all the way through the dining room and out the door. You guys built quite a following with your food truck, right? Yeah, yep. We and you're were, still going to do that? Yep, yep. We were a food truck all of last year. That was how we started that in catering. And then uh, our food truck is booked until the end of September this year. And um, we're still doing our booth inside of Rupp Arena uh, for all the basketball games and big concerts. What kind of barbecue do you have? What kind of barbecue do you serve? You know, 
that's something we talk about a lot. A lot of people ask, like, is this Kansas City style? Is it North Carolina right. style? And and honestly, I I'm I, I it's, there's no specific style. You know, my dad was in the military, and I grew up an Air Force brat, and we lived in Texas and learned how to cook brisket there, and we've lived in North Carolina and learned pork there, and we lived in Georgia originally, and and so we kind of are very eclectic with our barbecue taste. And um, honestly, I've been calling it central Kentucky style barbecue. You know, everything is made from scratch and I feel like that's how it's done in Kentucky. Everything is here is made from scratch and I think wow. that's our style, scratch made barbecue, so. Um, what's the favorite with customers? Oh man, it's it's all really good. Uh, people like the slaw and the potato salad. I have a lot of people come up and say, you know, I don't usually eat this, but I eat y'all's, it's really good. They like our small things like the fresh made pickles we do ourselves. Um, but the thing that really gets people is the bread. Uh, we make our potato buns from scratch and oh. um, that little extra rub people are like man i really loved the pulled pork or the brisket or the chicken and and then all of a sudden they'll say but i really loved that bread the bun and, yeah and it and it <laughs> you know it's it cuts you a little bit as a barbecue guy you're like man i spent all this time making this meat but uh it's okay as long as they're liking everything it's it's a good day well that's great thanks so much for letting us come out today and see the new place and yeah. so are you open now for good we are open our hours are tuesday through saturday 11 to 8. uh now the eight o'clock close time is a little bit uh, gray area oh, yeah? because uh, we make a certain amount of food every day and once it's gone it's gone so we always say barbecue today till it's gone all right and, well, uh, get out here early then yeah definitely get here early don't wait if you want the whole menu now Cheryl you had a fun story you had a fun day today right I've already had a fun day today because I have been to Mason County home of the McGee's Bakery which last week hosted one George Clooney and his wife Amal to buy a dozen of these babies oh my gosh transparent tarts isn't and that amazing? let me tell you, it is it is heaven in a little pie tin. Oh, it smells so good. So described by its baker, I can mm. attest to this, having had one when it was still warm. Uh, oh. They make them daily. And the story behind a, a transparent tart, she told me, is not so much that it is transparent, because as you can tell, not really, not transparent, um, but rather that it originated in times when transparent meant rather that you didn't have additional fruit to put in it or you didn't oh. have additional nuts to put in it okay. because you were on a farm these things weren't in season you know what you had eggs sugar flour um maybe a little vanilla so you could you could make a, a pie or if you didn't have enough to make a crust you could make a uh, transparent pudding it was called and transparent just sort of alluded to the fact it was kind of a stripped down item but it it is very tasty uh, contrary to what you think, it's not quite as sweet as chest pie. It doesn't have quite the vinegary tang that a uh, chest pie will have. It is it is very smooth. Is it's it delicious. at all lemony? Not lemony a bit. Not hmm. like uh, shaker lemon pie or anything like that. Interesting. Well, I can't wait to try that. And as soon as uh, I get near a fork, it's mine. And don't forget, this Friday is Food Truck Friday at the Herald Theater. We'll be there, and we want you to come by, too, and let's go eat. Let's go eat.